Everyone has a story. Stories have power. They help us understand each other. This is Jessup's journey. Hey, Nate, good to see you. Hey, good seeing you. Let's go chat. Nate, it's time to sign into Jessup's journal. Hi, I'm Doug Jessup. In today's episode of Jessup's Journal, I have Nate Jones with me. Nate, thanks for coming on. Anytime. Um, you know, we are doing the social distancing, the mask, but you know, we are hand sanitizing here. Thanks to the guys from Five Wise. The other thing that we do, you know, you've thought about washing your hands, but the question is, you know, have you thought about washing your nose? Well, of course I have. You have but it's because you're in a slightly different mode. I do, I have for 20 years. <laughs> Tell me, what is the connection? I mean, what have, what have you been using to wash your nose? The clear product. Okay, surprise, surprise. Surprise. Tell people why, why that shouldn't be a surprise. Because I started the company 20, almost 21 years ago now, Okay. Um, after my dad developed the nasal spray, mm -hmm. and he developed it to prevent ear infections in infants. Really? He was a family physician and he read all these studies about how xylitol blocks bacterial adhesion of the common pathogen, strep pneumo, H flu, MCAT, staph. Um, and he had babies that were having ear infections and, and typically what they do is they just give them antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. Right. And, and even when I was growing up, my dad understood that antibiotics have a lot of bad side effects. Mm -hmm. They mess with your gut microbiome, they, mu they mess with you a lot. Right. And so he wanted to find something else and he was dating a, a woman that he's now been married to for 20 years, but he was dating a, a woman who, who was a special ed teacher. Oh, and yeah. one of the things that she has commented on many times is her granddaughter, whose name was Heather, but her granddaughter was six months old and having these recurrent ear infections. Hmm. And she told my dad, she goes, you need to find something to do it because one thing that I know is every student that I've had through my career has had chronic ear infections and tubes put in their ears. Really? Because what happens, and this goes on to a completely different tangent, is mm -hmm. if you get fluid buildup in your ears, there's a, there's a very small window where, where kids really learn languages. Yeah. And if you have fluid in your, in your ears, you're not going to be able to learn those languages as effectively as if you don't have the fluid, as if you're healthy. And so she was really, I don't want to say pissed off, but she was frustrated because her granddaughter was now going to go have tubes and start going down that pathway. And so she just told my dad, and, and my dad went on this, this new thing called the internet <laughs> back in the 90s. <laughs> A couple you know? years ago, uh-huh. I don't, I don't know if it's going to stick around yeah, or anything. Yeah, well, you know. But he went on the internet on this new webpage called PubMed, and it's the first time in history where the medical studies that doctors read mm -hmm. and the dental studies were all collated together. Oh. And he was querying, you know, prevent ear infections and stuff like that. And what kept coming up were dental research studies hmm. because they've been using xylitol in dental practice and researching it since 1969 mm -hmm. because they've known since 1969 that it helps prevent tooth, tooth decay. It helps get rid of the bacteria in your mouth that cause cavities. So, and, what they, and when they're doing these studies, they collect all this other data. And so in the footnotes of all these studies, it was, yeah, the people using the xylitol gum were also getting 42% fewer ear infections, upper respiratory infections. Mm -hmm. But that was as far as they took it because they're dentists. They don't care what goes on in the nose. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're just dentists. Yeah, they yeah, just they, collect they, the they data. And, uh -huh. and uh, so my dad, he goes, well, they're little babies. They can't chew gum. Ear infections start in the nose. So he put into a saline spray and started washing their nose out and they stopped getting sick. Really? Okay, and uh, without sounding stupid, how do you spell xylitol? Z you spell xylitol, X-Y-L-I-T-O-L. Thus the name clear with the X. Yes, the name clear is because it clears your nose, mm -hmm. and that's what the company started with, was what's with the clear nasal spray. It clears your nose, and the X is, you know, for the xylitol. How long ago was that? We officially started as a company in June of 2000. I've known you for a, a number of years, and you do some crazy stuff that you just say, yeah, whatever, okay. Um, you're the only person that I know that has ever like put on a dive suit and decided to go jump in the ocean and go weld um, on what was it, an oil derrick or something like that? We, we worked on oil rigs, oil pipelines. We did work down at Lake Powell, pull salvaging houseboats, salvage an airplane out of Utah Lake. Beach Bottom Atomic Power Station. Why in the world would you go into a nuclear power plant? Because they had to go in and do some maintenance work on it. 
and it was it's, still running or what? No, no, no. They oh, shut okay. it down. Yeah. But you have to let it cool. And so we were actually diving. I mean, it wasn't really diving because you were only in like 10 feet of water. <laughs> yeah, but still. But it's in the, around the reactor you have, it's called a torus and it's full of water. And if it, the, the thing melts, you know, goes meltdown, then it, it floods it and cools it down. Okay. And so we were diving, but we were, the water, they let it cool down to 140 degrees. And so we were diving and we had ice blocks mm -hmm. on our back and our front oh, wow. and around our legs. And then you'd jump in and you'd have to get back out every, I don't know, hour to, to get new ice blocks. Wow. How in the world did you get into that? Because uh, I decided that I didn't really want to become a doctor. Okay. So your dad was a doctor. Yes. Son says, yeah, no, not for me. Yeah. Okay. And I was trying to find something else to do. Mm-hmm. And so. you just decided one day you're going to be a diver? Well, you know, I, I joined the Army. Uh, didn't like that very much. Uh, you know, I don't like people telling me what to do all the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I got it. Um, I actually, I, I, in the Guard, I actually really enjoyed being in the National Guard. I was in the National Guard out here at Camp Williams for, for 10 years, over okay. 10 years, until, until I moved to Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I wanted something that, that you know, I, I am a risk taker. I do enjoy things like that. I've you know, parachute, I, but it was, I was looking for something that was exciting. Okay, so you've done the diving. So it sounds like you've jumped out of a plane. Yeah. You've also been a pilot. So I am to, a pilot. You are a pilot, okay. How, how did you get into being a pilot? My stepdad was a pilot and it's, you know, I've always thought about it and, mm -hmm. you know, finally I just went out and got a pilot's license and fly. Okay, is there any interesting stories you can tell me about being a pilot? About being a pilot or about dumb things I've done as a pilot? Probably a little bit of both, huh? <laughs> I've run out of gas in Texas. I have... Uh, well, you were in the air. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that, without sounding stupid, uh, what happens when you run out of gas in an airplane when you're in the air? Well, if you're a good pilot, you don't run out of gas. <laughs> if you're an okay pilot that has great landing skills and you glide down, come through the cloud deck and land on a dirt road. Uh-huh, okay. And I take it that really happened? That happened, yeah. Okay, wow. Okay. What other crazy things has Nate Jones done? What's your definition of crazy? Well, something that I probably wouldn't do. Um, I then again, a, I'd probably just do just about everything. I flew a MiG in Australia. Whoa, okay, you I gotta tell jumped, me about that. I, well, I just went out and had a guy, you give him some money and they take you up and let you go flying a MiG and it was actually probably the best 45 minutes of my life because it is a it is a completely different experience than flying a regular airplane because he takes off and he's flying and he just cruises 500 feet off the water and then he goes Whoa. and he shoots straight up and you're like yeah you know did you were you in a G suit or anything or no they had a little compression suit but but uh you know he flies up and does a couple barrel rolls and a couple loops and he goes you're a pilot it's your stick and you just start, and it absolutely, it is the responsiveness of those, of those fighter aircrafts is amazing. Wow. Okay, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit. So you're a thrill seeker, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs tend to be thrill seekers, you know, because okay. you're, you're, you've got that risk thing. Um, but one of the big things, you've helped introduce me to some really, really cool guys. One was this uh, doctor by the name of Gustavo Ferrer. I mean, the guy ends up, you know, being in, in, uh, raised in Cuba, he gets broken out of a jail in Venezuela, and now he is like the leading pulmonologist yeah. um, in, in, down in Florida, okay? And he told me about some of this cool stuff that you guys are doing. How has the COVID pandemic changed the conversation at your company? It, it's really, it hasn't really changed the conversation because what we have known for 20 years is that xylitol blocks bacterial adhesion. And so we go out to a lot of medical conventions, we talk to doctors, we educate them. It's a hygiene tool, and, mm -hmm. and so it is an education process because doctors aren't really taught to think in the, in the, in the way of hygiene. They're taught drugs. They're taught cut, sto uh, cut poke, or, cut, or, or drug you, mm -hmm. and that's what they do. And when you come in and you start talking about hygiene, then it's a complete different thing. And, and you can go back, and this isn't anything new. This is something through history, because even when Semmelweis first ta started writing and talking about the need for doctors to wash their hands, they, the other doctors laughed at him. And even though yeah. they were having a 30% mortality rate in, with patients in Vienna, 
he was having a 1% because he was washing his hands. And you would think he would be hailed as a hero, but he wasn't. He was run out of town. Because basically, as I understand it, Dr. Ferrer explained to me, he said, look, you do that, and it's going to help prevent the, the virus that causes COVID from sticking to your nose. Okay, well, that doesn't take a rocket science to figure out if it's that easy. Sure, I'm going to do it. Why At do least you think, try it. Yeah, why do you think the, 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 the pushback? Because doctors aren't taught to think that way. Hmm. Because if you can't look at what it's doing to the actual virus, it, what's it doing? Is it, is it blocking something? And, and the, the, thing, the, the irony of it is, is, you know, we've been doing this for 20 years, talking and going out and talking to it. Right. And 99% and of the doctors that we talk to, within a couple of minutes, they're like, you know, the light goes on, it's like, that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why, you know, we've been successful as a country. If it wasn't true, and if it didn't make sense, we probably wouldn't be here. True, good point. It wasn't until after this whole pandemic started that we ever looked at what it did to viruses. So now we're going out and talking to them about viruses, and it's a different thing, but we have some that are like, no, it can't be that easy. It can't be that easy. Now, everybody's gonna wanna know, you know, that's watching this, okay, okay, well, why should you take this guy's word for it? Um, just out of curiosity, have you done any studies? I mean, because, yeah, people look at that. What, what kind of studies have been done since this pandemic um, that, that kind of help? Uh, there's, there's actually been a lot of papers mm -hmm. on the topic of nasal hygiene. Okay. Even in the Journal of American Medical Association, there was a paper, there have been a couple of them, where they're looking at just using a saline. Mm -hmm. And even the authors of those papers said, this would probably work better if you put virucidal agents or antiviral agents into it that block the virus in the nose. Okay. There was another one where they were looking at iodine, and they said, and the, and the closing arguments of the paper are, Anything we can do to lessen the viral load in the nose is going to lessen the severity of the symptoms and it's going to reduce the shedding, which is the spread of the virus to other people, okay? The studies that we've done at Utah State University show that not only does our nasal spray destroy the virus, but the, the studies that were done at University of Tennessee show that the xylitol blocks the ability of the virus to adhere to the tissue. And there was another paper that was published in I think it's Science Magazine, it's Anthony Chengdu, I can't even say his last name, he's French. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but it actually describes the method of action of the xylitol blocking the viral adhesion. And so it boggles my mind that with that much evidence, even though this isn't a drug, and so mm -hmm. we can't make a drug claim for it, we can't even file with the FDA to make it a drug. Yeah, true. So that's, that becomes a very, it becomes a very balancing act because you can't go out and say what this does, but at the same time, you can go out and show all the science for what it does. Mm -hmm. So Nate, th help me understand something, okay? So you've got all this science, it's been, xylitol's been around for forever, um, and we know it helps with the, the uh, ear infections and the dental and all that kind of stuff. But I also realize that apparently, since you're not a drug, you can't make quote unquote health claims. But what are some of the things that you guys can do? So, so we can make health claims because we're a hygiene tool. We can't make disease claims, oh, okay. okay? So we can say that you're washing away the bacteria, but we can't say that it prevents ear infections, okay? okay. And that's kind of like saying washing your hands doesn't do anything, it just gets rid of the bacteria. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and it's, you know, it's one of the most effective things you can do. We actually filed for an emergency use authorization yesterday. Oh, wow. Because the FDA has the power, they have the ability to say during this state of emergency, you can expand the claims if you have the science to back it up, mm -hmm. which we, you know, there's a, a, a lot of studies. The science is there to back it up. Right. And that would actually allow us to make some more of those claims. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what we're hoping is that they just grant it to us and say, yeah, you got this. You can talk about nasal hygiene and the importance of nasal hygiene and its part in helping to wash away this virus that's, that's causing all this havoc, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Okay. Now, you know, there's a phrase that I've used over the years. It's kind of like, you know, there's, there's that old phrase that says, build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. Well, that's great and wonderful, but people need to know about the better mousetrap. So what can people do to help get the word out? Because if it's just this simple, if it's just saying, hey, go wash your hands, and now just add, wash your hands and your nose, you know, I mean, what can people do to help? Well, the, the, the easiest thing, obviously, is to start doing it. And if you see the results, if you, or the other thing to do is go read up on the research, go read mm -hmm. the studies. They're on our website. Okay. You know, they'll, they'll, there'll be a link from yours. 
um, clear.com, X-L-E-A-R.com, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing to do, and it, and it just, it, it, I don't want to say it pisses me off, but it does. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. that, that in order to change health care policy in the United States, you don't have to go to the doctors. You have to go to the politicians mm. because health care is so politicized that health care, you know, mm -hmm. you want something done. You know, we go out and we educate doctors and the doctors say, well, is it FDA? Is it FDA approved? Well, it's not a drug. Well, is it FDA approved? No, it's not a drug. It's a cosmetic. It washes. Oh, well, and so it takes a couple minutes to get through that because they're so trained that if the FDA doesn't approve it, if the government doesn't approve it, then they shouldn't do anything with it. Well, and I realize this is just my opinion, and I get to say it because it's me, but, you know, um, I'm pretty sure that your nose does not know if you're left-leaning leaning or, or right-leaning. I could be wrong, but, you know. Um, one of the things that we've talked about, and you told me a story about this, and there was some lady, I don't know, radio TV or something, that was talking about, okay, all the stuff that you should or should not put up your nose. I mean, because that's the other thing we do have to be careful about. It's like, okay, you know, um, they did this iodine study. Uh, I'm pretty sure that does not sound like real fun. I mean, you know, I know for, you know, alcohol is great to be, you know, washing yeah. your hands, but you sure as heck better not be putting it up your nose. What is safe and what's not safe? you know, when it comes to doing that thing? Well, I mean, safe is, is very relative. And the reason why I say that is, if I have COVID-19, then the idea of using a nasal spray with iodine is not a bad choice, okay? okay? But if I'm completely healthy, I'm not gonna use it on a regular basis, okay? Because there are other issues. There's sensitivities to it. You have, th you know, thyroid, all these other health issues that could come about from it. But mm -hmm. if I know that I have it, I'm gonna use it for a couple of days and hopefully eradicate that. And okay. that's what the research shows, it does, it works. Okay. okay? But the, the difference with ours is you can use it, it's a hygiene tool, it's meant to be used every morning and every night, just like brushing your teeth, just like washing your hands, just like taking a shower. Okay, so as I understand it, xylitol is a sugar molecule. Exactly. Okay, so. But you don't wanna to refer to it as a sugar because you don't want people going out and mixing up table sugar and squirting it up their nose. Because if they do that, you're gonna cause all kinds of infections. Mm. Because the six carbon sugars that we normally eat, glucose, sucrose, fructose, even sorbitol, mannitol, maltitol, they feed the bacteria that are not good for us. Ah. Okay, the symbiotic bacteria that we have, you know, they eat those six carbon sugars. They don't eat the five carbon sugars. That's why xylitol works, is it's and a five carbon, five carbon. sugar. Okay. Gotcha. So okay. no, don't go spraying sugar up your nose. Use xylitol. Well, thanks for the chemistry lesson, because it's like, I, mean, I don't know, I was just trying to figure that out. Yeah. So, and, and you know, and, and the other thing that, that people can do is, after they read up on it, write a letter to your congressman and say, why aren't we being told to use nasal sprays? Okay. It is such a simple concept, and it, and it is absolutely appalling that our state epidemiologists in, across this country are not talking about it. It's appalling that the CDC isn't talking about it. You know, it doesn't take rocket science to connect the dots. But, you know, the other thing we look at is dots are something that, you know, we make marks. This is called Jessup's Journal. You know, I make a lot of marks on, on my journal from Rustico. And they have a hashtag. And it's the question that I ask every single person. And it's kind of an esoteric question, but um, it's called leave your mark. So, Nate Jones, how do you want to leave your mark? I always want to be part of the solution. Hmm. That's it. Final words. You've been the shortest answer I've ever had, but it's good. Part of the solution. Well, Nate, I want to thank you for coming on to Jessup's Journal. And of course, we want to thank some other people. The guy over there, Ed, you know, he's the guy that makes us look good, sounds good. Um, of course, we have uh, the, uh, the hand sanitizer and, and adult beverages from the folks at Five Wives. Um, Rustico makes my journals. Taylor Cooperative uh, helps me look good. And of course, JW Custom Hats. And yes, we'll, we'll give it. Uh, again, don't forget, it could be this simple, okay? Clear nasal spray, thank you very much for your support and thank you very much for coming on. Here's the thing I want people to remember. Stories have power. They help us understand each other. With another entry into Jessup's Journal and Nate Jones, I'm Doug Jessup, ABC4 News.